Hello and welcome to this video about brand SEO. You will learn why it's so important, particularly in 2025, and some actionable steps that you can take to audit your own website or your client's websites to see how Google would see your brand based on what you've written and then also what other external websites have written about you. My name is Mark Muller. I run an SEO agency called Ecom Experts based in Australia. And I've got a quote for you here from Google's ex-CEO, Eric Schmidt. And he said, brands are the solution, not the problem. Brands are how you sort out the cesspool. Brand affinity is clearly hardwired and is so fundamental to human existence that it's not going away. So what does he mean here with the cesspool? He basically means that there's so much low quality or wrong information on the internet that you basically need to sort through that and find the high quality content and brands are the way how Google is looking to do that. So that's why it's so important to understand how you can build your brand in 2025 and communicate clearly with search engines like Google. But this will also help you with AI answers actually, because robots like um, AI chat GPT tools also need to understand your website. We also have a quote here from Rand Fishkin, just in case you weren't quite convinced yet, that one of the most important things is to build a notable, popular and well-recognized brand, which will help you with the organic search as well. And even Google's John Mueller has said that the branded signals like user recognition and trust can indirectly influence rankings. And we see that a lot in search results. The biggest brands tend to rank at the top of search results, not just because they've invested in SEO, but because they've done the hard work on actually building a brand. So let's look into the actionable tips here now, what we can do to analyze how Google would see your brand. The first step here is Google's natural language API demo, where you can paste your own text from your own website in here to understand how Google sees the text, for example, on your homepage. Have you even mentioned the name of your brand on the homepage? And have you mentioned when your brand was founded, where it was founded, who's the person um, that founded your brand, those things you might want to put on the About Us page. But I think you get the idea here. On the home page, you should at least mention the services that you have, potentially the locations that you service, um, and make sure that all of that is connected to your brand. So when you pop all of that text in here, you can see that Google has recognized the brand Tesla through their natural language processing technology and then also identified another person, Elon Musk. And the NLP is then making that connection that Elon Musk, because it was founded by Elon Musk, that he must be the owner or director of uh, Tesla. So that is how the extraction works. And that's why it's important that you write easy to understand and succinct sentences that machines can basically understand and then make sense of to become part of Google's knowledge graph. We can also see here that Google recognizes locations like um, Palo Alto and California, Shanghai and so on, as well as it looks like Gigafactories here, which has been attributed to Tesla in this case. So um, make sure that you're actually visiting your About Us page, popping in that text and then thinking to yourself, how can I rewrite this to include more of these entities? And I've got a checklist here for you. So things that you should be mentioning are the company's mission and vision, the history of the company, what has happened in the past, and be as specific and exact as possible. Try to give years, locations, people. These are all entities that Google can follow. The founding date, the founders, um, locations, and then services and products as well. And I see often people missing out on the opportunity on the profiles of specific team members. So we can add that here for team members. You want to make sure that you're also mentioning on team members pages. What do they specialize in? They must have something that they do in the business. Um, for example, David is our head of technical SEO. And you can then link the technical SEO aspect to your service offering of technical SEO, for example. And I see this being something that is often missed out on. 
that we can actually connect our people to our services. Again, our people are an entity and the service is also an entity that Google can understand in particular if it happens at a specific location such as SEO services in Chicago. Great, then schema markup also extremely important. I've provided some general guidance here. So everybody needs organization schema. Local business schema is also a good idea if you are a local business, but there's also other schema types that get as specific as physiotherapy um, schema, for example. And then you also want to mark up important people such as person schema for the founder and ideally also author schema. So I will add that here. Author schema, you can also mark up to any person's profile. So ideally a profile page um, of a team member um, and that team member who has then been the author um, would be marked up as, uh, as author via schema markup. So um, why we want to do that on the profile page of the person is that on there we can just provide more information. We can give a rundown what his experience is, whereas if we just had an author box at the bottom of an article, that might be not enough for Google to really understand who that, who that person is. So if you want to provide the maximum um, trust to Google, then you can have a specific profile page for that team member and mark him up as an author and potentially from there also link back to some of the articles that he has written on your website. Now we also want to make sure that um, our brand name is properly spelled and consistent. And we need to check here with internal and external resources. So to give you an example of what's happening in the wild on real websites, this business here is about pain-free dentistry. And we can see that their actual website is pain-free dentist and then Sydney. So they're URL is different from the business name. That's not a major issue, but what we will see next um, will become a problem. So they have spelled their brand name pain and then dash free dentistry. Um, that's their business name here on their website. But then when we go to the about us page, we can't find that business name mentioned a single time here. So that's the problem then. And go then they call it um, pain free dentist clinic. Um, so that's the problem that there's no consistency between how the brand is spelled. If you're not mentioning your brand name on the about us page at least once, that is definitely a problem and you need to address that and be consistent with the spelling. Um, good thing here that they have actually linked to the different services, but let's see what Google can extract from this text over here. So pain-free dentist clinic, Google has this identified as the main organization. So we can see the problem now because pain-free dentistry is the organization. So there's been two businesses identified here within the text and we can see that that would be confusing to Google. These are supposed to be the same things, but um, Google's NLP thinks that they're two different things because they've been spelled differently and also used in different situations. Now the services mentioned here are good. So emergency seems to be part of their um, offering um, fillings and sedation. Google has recognized those, um, that's a benefit. Um, but also lots of things missing. Um, the person here, Lisa Chong, the main dentist was identified, that's good. But um, for example, um, where was it founded? What, what um, suburbs are they are serving? This would be location um, based entities that they have failed to insert. Um, what year was the clinic founded? Um, all of those things have not been inserted yet. And it's an important opportunity to basically improve that. Um, now I will provide you here with a method that you can use. I have created a bot that you can use where you just provide the bot with the about us page and let's say the home page. And the bot will then give you feedback on whether you have done a good job with this process. I will show you the ChatGPT bot now. The bot is called the Brand Entity Auditor. And we simply jump in here and we copy and paste all our URLs, um, just like so. And then we let the bot run. 
And another thing that needs to run well is your website. That's why I'm a fan of Cloudways, which is the sponsor of this video. The newest feature of Cloudways is DNS Made Easy, where you can now manage the DNS that's normally with a platform like Cloudflare directly inside of Cloudways. So this is a huge time saver and also provides you with instant propagation, faster loading times and always online features as well. So I've been a fan of Cloudways for many years and all of my websites are on Cloudways. And the DNS is a new feature that I can absolutely uh, get behind. Uh, most of my websites are on WordPress and their WordPress hosting in particular WooCommerce is second to none. So I've been using Cloudways for all of my WooCommerce websites and I have also compared it directly to competitors such as WP Engine and the speeds have been really outstanding when I have migrated websites from WP Engine to Cloudways um, and the in e-commerce it's particularly important that your website loads fast because visitors visit four to six pages to get to the checkout from your homepage, category, product pages, um, add to cart, um, checkout, thank you pages. So that's why it's super important that your site is fast if you are in e-commerce. Now I will also leave a link below in the video so that you can get a 25% discount for the first three months that you're using Cloudways. The servers that I like best are Voucher and DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is partly owned by Cloudways, so it just makes sense to use that as they have vertical integrations. And a good starting plan would be the um, two gigabyte or the four gigabyte plan, which is what most of my websites are on. And the customer support is just fantastic as well. They always help me out when I'm in a pinch. Um, you can talk to a real human within seconds and they will figure out exactly why your reps website um, might be not running as fast as you would like or why the server is sort of meeting its resource limits and they help you to optimize that as well. So give Cloudways a try. Um, the code will be in the description below and now we get back to the video. Okay, so the audit has now run and we can see here that it's trying to analyze the consistency of the spelling of the brand name. But good reason here why we still need humans in the loop. It actually got confused and didn't realize that it was spelled differently. ChatGPT thinks the main brand name is Pain Free Dentist Sydney, whereas they have called it Pain Dash Free Dentistry um, Sydney. And so there's a discrepancy between that. And so you can tell here that even the AI is getting confused. Um, even when we're specifically prompting about that. So you can be sure that Google would also be very confused about this specific brand in terms of what the real business name is. And then we also have other things like the founding year not being mentioned, um, the location where it was founded, um, and specific dates um, also have not been mentioned. Um, for example, the uh, practitioner here could have mentioned when she started practicing dentistry in which year university degrees and so on as well. So quite a lot of improvements that could be made here and the bot can help you identify those in an easier way. But we can see do not rely only on this, also rely on your own um, senses to make sure that Google can understand your brand in the best way possible. And I will leave you with this list of um, external websites such as Scam Advisor, um, G2.com, Clutch, Trustpilot, and Proven Experts. Some of these are more um, B2B industry. So I would say maybe um, Clutch would be more B2B and perhaps Trustpilot as well. However, all brands can and should set these up in my view because Google is actively checking on what people are saying about your brand on external websites. And you want to make sure that you are set up there, you're monitoring your brand and that you're getting positive reviews because all of that is part of the active brand building process that we all need to participate in in 2025. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment and subscribe if you like and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. This was Mark from Ecom Experts.